If you have visited this channel before, then you'll know that Astrophotography Japan is mostly about imaging of deep sky objects, like galaxies and nebula, star clusters, and sometimes even our solar system neighbors. But today I'm out here on a cold and sunny January afternoon and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to check out this new product. This is the SV510 Solar Telescope from Zerboni. Why don't you stick around with me and let's see how it performs. It's that simple. So this is a very interesting little telescope here from Zerboni. It's a 400 millimeter focal length and 60 millimeter aperture. It's designed specifically and only to be a solar scope. So it has a solar filter built into the front and you should not remove that. That's an ISO certified solar filter, so you know it's going to be safe. It has a very nice little rack and pinion focuser here, which of course is single speed, but it's got a nice uh, firm tension to it and it holds its position very well. There's a 20 millimeter eyepiece, which gives us a 20x view of the sun. And to find the sun, you use this solar finder which is your typical design which has a pinhole in the front here and a projection screen in the back with a uh, target on it and when you line up that projected image of the sun on that center of the target well there you have it the sun is in your eyepiece now I'm seeing a orange yellow round ball and I can pick out about six or seven sunspots already. Pretty nice. It's a just the right sort of amount of illumination. It's not too bright. Uh, clearly very dark contrast with the background. And it occupies about 20% of the field of view. So I think it's about the right magnification here to see it. And the clarity is very good. You know it's easy to see those sunspots. The OTA is made of aluminum, and a lot of the accessories here are plastic, but they're quite high quality. It comes with a tripod, and this tripod, of course, is a little bit narrow and compact, um, but it has a brace on it, and it's of sufficient quality and steadiness to hold this very light, small little scope. Although this telescope from Zerboni is constructed from inexpensive materials to make it affordable to the general public, it was designed smartly with standard specifications like using 1.25 inch interface parts, so other eyepieces and diagonals can be used with it as well. Furthermore, the attachment of the telescope to the supplied tripod uses a standard size screw hole, I believe that is one quarter inch but it also has a short Vixen bar enabling it to be mounted on any typical telescope alt-as mount for more convenient fine motion control. A week after I filmed those prior video snippets, I went back to the park again. This time, I decided to bring along some Astro cameras to see if I could capture any good images through the SV510 telescope. I started off with this remote Wi-Fi camera the SC001, an older model camera also sold by Zerboni. It costs less than $100. I like the concept of this camera because it does not require an external battery source or computer to operate. All one needs is a smartphone or tablet with Wi-Fi. However, like most planetary cameras, the field of view of this sensor is quite small 
giving an apparent high magnification. You can only get a minute or so with the sun in the field of view. With an eyepiece, the FOV is much wider and manual adjustments of the telescope to recenter the image is less of a problem. But for camera imaging, the SV510 tripod proved to be too cumbersome to constantly recenter the target. So I put it on my old Skywatcher AZ Pronto Alt As mount. Thanks to the convenient Vixen bar at the bottom of the SV510, attachment to the AZ Pronto mount was no problem. This provided more stability and much better precision control on the field of view. This is an image taken by the SC001 camera in the photo snapshot mode. Frankly, it was not bad at all. Because the sensor is a bit small, the entire sun would not fit into the field of view. But one could plainly see a number of features, including one set of rather large sunspots at the bottom right of the image. Later, I took this photo and imported it into my desktop iMac computer and processed it for a bit of color, contrast, sharpness, etc. Here is the resulting processed image. For a very inexpensive camera, these results were quite nice. The control apply is shown here in the video mode during actual video capture. This is a screenshot recording taken by my Samsung tablet that I use to operate the application menu. There are a few different video and photo parameter settings that you can adjust, but frankly, it is very, very limited. In real time, you can select the full screen mode and view the image like this. You can also record it as an MP4 video file for watching with QuickTime. But you do not have the ability to select any other type of video output format. Notice something here. Some of the sunspots, about five of them, do not seem to move along with the rest of the image as it drifts across the screen. In nighttime photography, we may hardly even notice these dark specks of dirt on the sensor. But when imaging the sun, they look remarkably like sunspots, don't you think? I guess that I need to do a little bit of sensor cleaning here. I would not have noticed this if it were not for viewing in the video mode. I think this SC001 camera is okay for sun or moon or planetary observations or even daytime terrestrial observing in video mode on a smart device. But in my experience, it is not very good for looking at the stars or taking still images of stars due to the software limitations. Also, I do not think you can stack the output MP4 video frames on any known software. That usually requires an AVI file or other format. But for less than $100, it is an okay, reasonable value. However, what interests me more is that recently I noticed Viboni released an upgraded Wi-Fi camera model with the IMX662 sensor. This is the SC311 camera for electronic assisted astronomy. I am quite sure it is superior in performance thanks to that newer sensor. It uses a different Apple as well one with more sophisticated capabilities. The Apple also seems to be designed to be more effective for EAA applications. I'd like to try it sometime. Next, I wanted to use one of my ZWO cameras on the SV510 telescope, especially one with a larger sensor so I could capture the entire sun. But of course, the ZWO cameras require an external battery source and the ASI Air to operate them. So I modified my mounting setup with a customized Astromania dual clamp device that I previously created. In this case, one side was used to hold the telescope and the other side to hold the ASI Air computer. Notice that I am employing the ASI 533 MC Pro Color camera here. At 470 grams, 
that makes it about equal to the weight of the entire SV510 optical tube assembly in this configuration. Crazy, huh? I worried that the telescope may not be able to handle a big and heavy Astro dedicated camera like that. However, to my surprise, the rack and pinion focuser securely held the camera at focus without any slippage, despite there not being any way to lock the focus position. It worked fine with the sun at about a 45 degree angle in the sky. This is a photo taken in the preview mode at the fastest exposure time setting of 1 one thousandths of a second, and at nearly the lowest gain setting possible. The image is not great, but the entire sun did fit within the field of view. These kinds of targets like the sun, moon, and planets are best observed in video mode, so that is what I did next. Thanks to the large pixels and the size of this IMX533 sensor, the entire sun even fit into the field of view at the 1080p video setting as well. This is a screen capture video from my Samsung tablet as I attempted to center and focus and make adjustments to the image. Here I discovered that I could adjust the white balance to mimic the color of the sun by modifying the blue and red channel color balance settings. And here I found the best way to focus was to drop down to the 360p high zoom settings and make adjustments under that high zoom virtual magnification. I could then capture some AVI video footage as you see happening here for use later in frame stacking applications. When I went back to 1080p, the focus looked spot on, and I also captured some AVI video footage at this magnification as well. And here are a couple of the final images created using the ASI Video Stack planetary video stacking application from ZWO. Considering these images were taken with the Zviboni SV510 telescope that cost less than $100, the quality is pretty remarkable, don't you think? You know, I think this is actually a great idea for the upcoming solar eclipse coming across the U.S. from Texas all the way up through the Northeast. I've got a lot of family and relatives that are actually living right along that path. And I'll probably end up purchasing one or two of these and send them that as a gift. You know, as a seasoned astrophotographer with lots of telescopes and equipment already, maybe this is not really suitable for me because I've already purchased some solar filters for my telescope. And you can buy these from Zviboni to fit their scopes, and they're readily available. It's really the same kind of filter that's built into the front of this scope. But for someone, a family that has children, or anyone that's interested in experiencing that solar eclipse, then this will really give you a very special view and memorable experience. So I uh, commend Suboni for coming up with something like this at this price point, less than $100 for this. And quite frankly, it's well worth it. I mean, it's, it's solidly built. The rack and pinion focuser here is smooth with just the right tension. The quality of the eyepiece is decent. Um, I think it's a good product. I like it. If you are interested in learning more about what to expect during the upcoming 2024 solar eclipse in America, I highly recommend you watch this video on the Bray Falls YouTube channel. He has several great ideas and helpful safety suggestions with web links to enhance your eclipse viewing experience. Thank you for watching today. 
Unfortunately, I won't be in the USA in April for the upcoming Rare Celestial event. I'm sure it's going to be memorable. Have a wonderful and safe experience, and I hope you are all blessed with clear skies to enjoy it. See you next time on Astrophotography Japan.